What's happening YouTube? Today I want to talk a little bit about how I manage my DNS, my domain name stuff um, for my domain, uh, for my public facing servers uh, such as mail, web, and so on. Um, things that need a, a public IP address. Uh, I use a provider called DigitalOcean for this and I manage my DNS records with DigitalOcean uh, through Terraform. And I've been doing this for a few years now. Um, a couple days ago I realized that I hadn't updated this in quite a while so uh, not only were my DNS records out of sync with uh, what I had as far as my Terraform locally and my records on the uh, DigitalOcean website, um, but I also noticed that uh, Terraform had upgraded a couple versions before I touched, uh, uh, since I touched this repo last, um, again, three years ago, uh, roughly. Um, so I just wanted to capture some thoughts on um, things I found interesting, stuff I had to do to get it working, and a couple bugs I found. So the first thing I had to do, well, I didn't have to do this, but the first thing I noticed um, was that stuff had changed a bit as far as DigitalOcean and, and what I was familiar with as far as how their stuff worked. Um, I found a, a really cool, first I found several scripts and tools that would let you, um, that folks had written, community had written to update uh, records for droplets, which is what they call servers, or DNS records and so on, was stuff that was written by the community to manage um, through the API. Uh, what I came across though is that DigitalOcean now has what they call DOCTL. So the first thing I did was uh, get DOCTL working uh, using the instructions here on the DigitalOcean website. I really like uh, the documentation that DigitalOcean has, like just tons of walkthroughs and things that can help you get started when you want to do a particular task on their platform. Um, the big one here, I think, was creating the API token, and that allowed me to uh, use the DOCTL tool once I did this auth step here. So the tool works pretty much like you'd expect. Um, let's just take a look here. Uh, it's got a ton of subcommands, and the help is, you know, pretty good as, as far as the integrated online help. So if I were to say DOCTL compute and press enter, the uh, help here, the available commands would change um, based on uh, the target, right? So, so um, the target and then the switch and the CLI, in this case, the target's compute, and the switch we're interested in would be domain. Okay, so let's just show real quick if I type compute domain. Again, the uh, interactive help is updated. Let's just cut to the chase. I know that I can say list and I'll use my own uh, uh, domain as an example. And sure enough, I get back um, the, I guess this would be the SOA for the domain. The, the TLD. The other interesting thing I found was that you could say, um, uh, let's see if I can get this right. So if I think if I said uh, DOCTL compute get, and I, and I think you can even abbreviate it as G. Let's see, maybe it was domain G. Okay, so what I found as I went through this was there were a couple different ways to get the same results using DOCTL. So DOCTL I felt like was super easy to use. Um, I basically just downloaded a binary for my architecture and made it executable and put it in uh, user local bin. And uh, with that in place, um, I was able to tackle the next step uh, of my setup. So I had mentioned earlier that um, it had been a while since I looked at this repo and stuff was sort of out of sync between local and um, the records you could see through the user interface, through the website for, for uh, DigitalOcean, for my domain. So before I um, uh, 
try to tackle uh, getting those things in sync, I wanted to make sure that my Terraform uh, was up to date. And this this took me a, a little bit, but I was able to get things onto uh, uh, 0.14.5. Um, I think this was pretty straightforward. Uh, 13 has an upgrade command. It's, you know, Terraform upgrade 0.13, something like that. 14, you had to actually, um, let's see here. You had to actually create a, a lock that locked in the providers. So uh, DigitalOcean provider for Terraform had changed pretty, pretty dramatically since I used it last. And Terraform 14.5 wanted me to sort of lock that in once I got things um, the way I wanted them. I wound up actually, um, and I'll show this in a second, I wound up actually taking out the dot Terraform directory so that it basically emptied the state. And it, you know, because it's a small 15 record domain, um, I, I recreated that by hand. So the thing about Terraform working with uh, DigitalOcean was I had to make Terraform aware of my API key. Um, um, so what you wind up doing is export, uh, I think it was DO token equals, and then uh, whatever your token is. So um, I'm not gonna actually show that on the video, of course. But um, once that token was exported, I was able to um, uh, run Terraform commands that interacted with my DigitalOcean account. Um, the other thing I do for Terraform, or I, I did in this case because I had quite a few problems getting, getting started on this, um, is I'll export um, uh, TF log equals, and I usually set it to something like temp, um, whatever, sure, set it to that. Um, so what this does is um, it's going to pump the debug way up. And I think, well, let me show an example of how that looks. So I'm actually going to try the import command. So, so at this point, um, I, I've got my old uh, TF files sitting here, which turned out to be pretty helpful. Um, but at this point, what I want to do is bring my local Terraform state in sync with what I have remotely at DigitalOcean. So for that reason, I needed to import um, to my local Terraform uh, everything that already existed and then once everything was in parity, I would be able to uh, manage on an ongoing basis on my DNS records. Okay, so it took me a bit to figure this one out. Um, this command here, uh, this Terraform import, works a little bit differently for the TLD than it does for the other things. So, so you'll see what I mean in a second. So the first thing you would do, you know, if you wanted to switch over from managing your DNS through the UI to Terraform, for instance, you could do this. So you'd start with um, pulling in the TLD. So there's a couple things going on, right? One thing is we get a ton of debug because remember, I turned on uh, TF underscore log. Very helpful, in my opinion. Don't have to do it if you don't want to see all this extra stuff. But the other thing that happened here was um, it prepared it, but it's already managed by Terraform. So uh, it's basically a no-op for us. Nothing happened that time. Um, okay, so now we've got the TLD imported locally. So the next thing I needed to figure out was how to um, use DOCTL to import from the API the records that I wanted in Terraform. So in talking to the API, these records have IDs that I needed to figure out how to get. So I wound up using this command. And what this did was show 
uh, all, all the records for the domain that um, I have at DigitalOcean, but it gave me these ID numbers and so that subsequently allowed me to do something like so here's how the command looks. So you can see here, um, I'm importing a digital ocean record for www, and then there's a space. This domain, this record ID, which maps to something from the list above. And then of course, all this has to exist already in, uh, in Terraform. Uh, so if, if this stuff isn't here, your import's going to fail. You have to define the record in Terraform, name it the same way so that when you do the import, um, everything just goes into the state. Okay, so I, I can run that command, but we're not actually going to see um, anything happen because uh, it's already there. So all this is uh, working already. So it did prepare the import, um, um, but it says resource already managed by Terraform. Okay, so I did this piece earlier. Um, so that's good, so far so good. One thing to note, uh, when I went to do um, the import, the um, NS and MX records, um, I ran into to a bug basically. And the issue with those was um, I, I found some other folks have been having the same issue. So, so it turns out there's something with the API at DigitalOcean that certain types of DNS records, and, and these folks were using DOCTL rather than Terraform, as I was, um, there was something there where you had to append a dot character um, at the end of your API request right, to, to get this to work properly. I think there's a bug open on it, um, but what I did was go ahead and um, add to the DigitalOcean help site, whatever it is, community site, how exactly I got around this for MX, so mail server and name server records. So if you're really interested, that's there, and I'll make it in the um, uh, details down below, but I um, thought I would point that one out. Okay, so go into one of the hosts and just see how the uh, IPv4 stuff looks. So I think from here, we can see that everything uh, kind of matches up as expected, right? So um, we do an NS lookup, Here's the name server, here's the IP. So that's IPv4. Um, as you can see, we have IPv6 also set up because why not? So if I want to just show that I can ping another IPv6 host, that's so the next thing I wanted to do was, um, I think, create PTR records, right? So be able to do reverse lookups um, on my host. And, and I wanted to try to do it for IPv6. So reading the web page on this quadruple A record, that's, that's the forward record, right? But long story short, way down here at the bottom, they talk about PTRs. And they say, we automatically create PTRs for droplets based on the name that you give the droplet in the control panel. Okay, great. So um, droplets with IPv6 enabled 
only get PTR records for the first IPv6. So even though I created, you know, imported, got this all into Terraform, like it's sitting there, my host has IPv6 and so on, um, I couldn't figure out why I didn't, I didn't have this ability to sort of do the reverse lookup. And I think it's because I named the um, IPv6 host name the same as the um, IPv4 host name. So I think what's happening is when I attempt to hit the PTR, um, it already exists for the IPv4 host. I could be wrong. That, anyway, that was my first guess. So, so let's try something. Let's see what happens if I change the host name in Terraform and then um, I'll just move this out of the way. Let's um, Let's see what happens if I do a plan. Okay, so it's telling us, yep, you want to change the name of the quadruple A record to from www to www6. So we're going to try this. I, I won't even plan. I think it's a pretty small change. Terraform apply. And it's not even going to destroy it. It says it's going to change in place. So let's see what happens. Say yes. Okay, so essentially what we've done is update the DNS record in DigitalOcean's database. I assume that um, the reverse record should be created fairly quickly. Um, since my name servers 1, 2, and 3 all belong to DigitalOcean, I don't think it would take too long to propagate like, like a change to the forward record would. But hey, you never know. Let's, uh, let's just see what happens. Um, oh, I'm not going to do it from this host. I'm going to uh, come back to my tool results. Let's try um, let's try this because I think if we do this test, uh, we should be able to see if any IPv6 records exist. No. All right. Perhaps that's going to take a few minutes to propagate. Um, I guess I'll come back and check this later, and if it shows up, um, I was just curious to see if we could fix the um, thing with the PTR, if we could understand that. But uh, pretty easy to do all this. Like the documentation that again DigitalOcean provides, I I really like it, and I find it very useful. Um, so. Well, this is what I get for being impatient. So, a few minutes after I uh, turned all this stuff off, um, I was checking the hosts file to make sure it wasn't in there. So if I do IPA, uh, the global, not the uh, local link. So I take this hexadectet and I say ping six minus C2 on that. Okay, so that works, but it also, remember that record I made, www6, say C2, www6. And there she goes. That update was pretty quick. I was just very impatient. Um, so it looks like we have a PTR now and reverse lookup. Ooh.